Namaskara and welcome to BIC Talks, a podcast brought to you by Bangalore International Centre, where we present conversations that move, inform and encourage discourse. Actually, what we are doing here, what we did here, and Laura Spinney put it in a full page in Guardian, and she wrote a headline, Kerala's rock star minister. I didn't expect that, you know. <laughs> Former Kerala health minister K.K. Shailaja became a global icon because of her handling of the first phase of the COVID pandemic. In her new memoir, My Life as a Comrade, she tells her story. From her childhood as a shy, fearful girl, her days as a school teacher where she learned the art of managing difficult students, to her entry into politics, leading to a tenure as health minister, where she dealt with two terrifying epidemics. In this episode of BIC Talks, she tells the story of Kerala in post-independent India, how its communist politics shaped her family and the state, and what makes the Kerala model so remarkable. K.K. Shailaja is in conversation with journalist Indu Lekha and writer and editor Manju Sara Rajan. This event originally took place in the BIC premises in collaboration with Prakriti Foundation in early June 2023. She's been called the rock star health minister, coronavirus slayer, but to the people of Matnur in North Kerala, which she represents as an MLA, and indeed to Malayalis everywhere, she's Shailaja teacher. The familiar, comforting figure who steadfastly steered the state through multiple health crises, all with a warm smile, as you can see right now. <laughs> but what we saw in those years from 2016 to 2021 was, in fact, a culmination of a journey which began years or even generations ago which was shaped by multiple influences from the unique history and culture of the state of Kerala to her close family to, of course, her political ideology. And it's this journey that's been captured very engagingly in her wonderful new book, My Life as a Comrade, the story of an extraordinary politician and the world that shaped her, co-authored with journalist, writer, and editor Manju Sarah Rajan. And the subtitle is indeed very accurate. It's an extraordinary story of an extraordinary politician. She's a pioneering woman in a field that's heavily dominated by men, a deeply empathetic public figure who genuinely cares about making a difference. And in a world where we're always told to promote our own brand, someone who's self-effacing and never really consciously seeks the limelight. Manju has very skillfully captured all these multiple threads and woven them together in a book that's not just about a very interesting person, but also about the political, sociological, and cultural history of modern Kerala, in a sense. Today, it's my privilege to speak to both of you about this book, about teacher's work and her life. Shailja teacher, Manju, a very heartfelt welcome from all of us here today. I want to begin this conversation by, you know, going back to the influences the women in your family had on your teacher. But before you answer the question, I would request Manju to first read a passage from your book about your grandmother, Amama, first. Thank you so much, Indu. Thank you all so much for coming. So I'm going to start with a reading from chapter number three. It's called Winds of Change. The political and social awareness in people like Amama and many others was nurtured by what they imbibed in the classes that Communist Party workers conducted back then in places like ours. My grandmother insisted her friend Karuta wear a munda, even though caste rules forbade it. And the two of them attended Communist Party meetings together like a pair of renegade girlfriends. Many of the upper caste or Savarna people in the area were angered by such everyday acts of individual freedom. Clothing was a significant public marker of caste domination. When anyone abandoned it, that threatened centuries of structural power of one group over everyone else. Perhaps my grandmother got away with it partly because of her father. The jadi or caste of the Makuta Mestri wasn't such a big deal to people. His work 
elevated him over his own lot and gave his family a degree of exemption. My grandmother put her limited freedom in learning to as much use as she possibly could. She wasn't a political person as much as she was a social worker, and her instincts were finely honed by everything she learned from her brothers and the classes she attended. Thanks so much, Manju. We've just heard a slight sliver of those influences, but teacher, could you elaborate on the influence the women in your family had on you, particularly your grandmother and mother who, I mean, they fought against convention in their own very different, you know, different ways. Your grandmother battled caste discrimination. Your mother, in fact, asked for a divorce, which is highly unusual back then. So how did those influences, you know, shape you, your political journey? Good morning, everybody. I was very happy to be here in such a noble gathering here to discuss about a book. Actually, I was not intended to write an autobiography or something like that, you know. But as Manchu read it, my grandma, her life means the life in 1920s, 30s, 40s. At that time, what is the mode of the society. What life we have lived at that time. I was born in 50s, but before that, there are stories from my mother, my, my grandmother and her colleagues. That was not a very loving or a very pleasing history, you know. It was very miserable things. There was several kinds of atrocities and uh, miseries they were facing at that time. Actually, I want to write something about my grandma and the societies at that time, mode of the society at that time. My grandma was a good storyteller, you know. <laughs> every evening, I wrote it in the book, every evening after... 6.30 or 7, we all assembled in the veranda of my house. Not only our family members, but even our neighbors, without any discrimination of caste or religion. They were friends of my grandma. They were assembling in my house to hear from my grandma. What stories grandma was telling at that time? She was telling Purana, Idihasa, etc. I wrote it like that. Krishna, Rama, Shiva, all become our friends because she's, she was narrating in such a tone this Purana and Idihasa, Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc. But not only that, she was telling the real life story. What was their life at that time? that feudal culture, landlords and tenants at that time. No human beings in the downward caste was allowed to own a piece of land. They had no proper eatables to eat. They were working, working and working, but all the rice and other agricultural productions were going to the landlord's house. British rule was there and they were selling. Actually, the landlords were selling this thing to British rulers and they were taking it to sometimes in war field or sometimes to their country. That was happening there. So the poor people were starving. Total, totally they were starving, you know. Nothing to eat. And my grandma and my family suffered that. Not only, uh, not, uh, th th there are two phases of their life. First part I explained, my great-grandfather was a supervisor in a British estate that is uh, now in Karnataka, Kodag, uh, this Makutam. And uh, she had very good earning at that time and my family was very well built at that time. And my mother and uh, her sister, up to the age of uh, eight or 10, their life was very beautiful. 
but after that everything changed my great grandfather died and we have nothing no job no work no proper ownership for the land but the landlord was very friendly to my great grandfather because he was working in raman mestri mestri means supervisor you know in a british estate so he was very fond of him and he gave some piece of land for us but only with that land we cannot survive and after that the politics also came because of the untouchability and starvation we were interested to left politics left ideology says that we have to struggle against that we have to fight against the landlordism we have to organize the peasants agricultural workers and we start organizing the poor people that karata you know manju read it, read it and karata was belongs to pulaya caste you know it was the most downtrodden caste you know there are uh, four castes in the varna system chadur varna brahmana kshatriya vaishya shudra this pulaya were not included even in the varna they were human beings without any varna you know they were below that you know uh their life what a misery i cannot explain everything but my grandmother and grand uncles interested in left politics and they want to organize them and to give them proper life in this janma <coughs> this this time itself you know their life and uh, that fighting that goes several struggles and uh, they were not uh, it, is, it is not very easy the malabar special police by the british rule they oppressed they uh, make violence against these poor people arrested beaten up and uh, put it in jail put them in jail sometimes shoot at, uh, at the site and most, so many people died martyrs they become martyrs by shooting or hanging uh, or uh, beating in jail and police station that was the misery but they were fighting and fighting and fighting because they want to a uh, life for not only for them but for their children in future they believe like that there are so many experiences and stories about that grandma was telling that story souls about the martyrs and about the fight etc so i want to write these things for the society for the children and for the next generation i was thinking about that but i was no, i am i am not a good writer you know writing is different experience i can speak about that at that time jagannath publications called me chiki sarkar called me just after my ministership and she asked me uh, whether you are interested to write a story of you she wants my childhood experience and also my experience as a minister but in between there are other experiences as a politician as a political worker youth women party i was that also i am now also that but i cannot put everything in a book but i started telling my stories my uh, stories about my grandma grand uncle struggles malabar region uh, at that time british rule and the feudal culture etc the caste discrimination to manju they instructed manju to write this thing chiki sarkar and, and manju wrote it very very beautifully very i might add beautiful in a very beautiful <laughs> language you know. because of <laughs> this kind of experience i become involved in politics i was very much interested in even even from my childhood to politics to join in the struggle to make the society different for the future and i also joined in politics joined in struggle and that was my story it is not child the teacher story it is story of the society you know i cannot explain everything every anecdote every experience in this book now also it become large 306 pages <laughs> actually they intend but, to but 100. a very easy read doesn't yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. Uh, 306 yeah, pages but uh, a book originates or it happened
I, I in fact wanted to you know ask you about that process itself. Manju very beautifully said uh, just a few minutes back that it's a duet of one, and it's not. I mean, it's not like just writing your own autobiography, right? When someone else is writing it for you, but the voice has to be authentic. So, what were the challenges in the process, and uh, what did you disagree about? How did you resolve those disagreements? Yeah, I mean, it 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 is a peculiar construct. Um, of a book to work on because as teacher just pointed out there was one reference that still got through <laughs> to Voldemort <laughs> and Harry Potter because what I consciously tried to do was to scrub myself out of the voice of that book because ultimately this is and that's why I said that it was a do it of one because even though we were working together it had to come out in the way that teacher normally speaks, it had to be in her cadence, it had to sort of reflect her experiences. And we come from completely opposite. We come from two ends of the state and we have completely <laughs> different experiences. I mean, writing it was essentially the most challenging part because she's a very busy woman. She was a very busy woman. She's still a very busy woman. I must have about a hundred WhatsApp voice notes and we have totally different day schedules but you know i think in i think what worked for us is that we both in some parts of our personality we really began to understand one another because the process that we followed was essentially she would relate her stories i would transcribe them and write chapters based on that and then send it to her now if you are not somebody that sees eye to eye with your subject, then you can really spend a lot of time in just correcting each other or disagreeing with one another. And we didn't do a lot of that. There were times when I had to push her or she would say to me, she once said to me, you know that I have to be the one to defend the book, right? <laughs> because which, because I, I'm curious which part that was. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the thing is, because I'm a journalist and, and you're always looking at it from a reader's point of view. And, and sometimes perhaps you, you know, I'd say we had a we had a pretty easy, easy dance of it. I understood what she meant because ultimately it's in her voice and it's her story. And we didn't really have too many, we didn't have any disagreements. I would just sort of push her to, I think, more be introspective. There are challenges to being a female politician in Kerala because Kerala is a fundamentally con conserva conservative place. So I think those were the, it was more an act of kind of prodding and discussion than, than really happily, actually, we still get along very well. So there were no disagreements. And nothing that can't be settled over a nice rice and fish curry, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to go a little deeper into what you just mentioned about Kerala actually being a deeply conservative society because we've had a small discussion earlier as well. Three of us are women from Kerala who've lived experiences of it. But, you know, on the face of it, Kerala seems like this, you know, very progressive, liberal state where it's much better for women. And to a, to a great extent, it definitely is. But if you scratch that surface, and if you've lived there, if you're Malayali, you know how conservative society actually is. And teacher, I think you've written in the book as well that I think it particularly irks some when a woman is at the receiving end of such accolades. When a man proclaims his success, he's stating facts. When it's a woman, she's showing off. Could you expand on that experience, teacher, of navigating this kind of dichotomy of, you know, you were a pioneering woman in a public space and in a party that's introduced some, you know, very progressive policies, but at the same time, you are operating in a society that is actually conservative. How did you manage those two worlds? I have very few experiences or uh, like that, you know, to suppressing everything because you are women. But the society as a whole is uh, like that. The women, I belong to a political family and uh, in my family I got all the supports to come out. I was a shy girl actually <laughs> from the beginning. But my grandma, my grand uncle, my uncle and after my marriage, that family is also a political, politicalized family, my husband's family. And I got support from everywhere. But the society as a whole, Kerala progressed a lot, we can say so. Uh, if we are comparing it to Uttar Pradesh or Bihar or any northern state, 
Kerala is very progressive state, but the feudal culture and conservatism, that is there in Kerala also. We cannot completely uh, pull it out from the society, you know. It will take time because uh, we are believing, we communists are believing our uh, Indian society is now, it is feudalistic and also capitalist. When capitalism come, we believe the feudal culture will vanish. But unfortunately in India, that is going hand in hand. The feudal horse beliefs, rituals, everything is here. And the capitalism is also growing, that consumerism, the love for profit, profit only, and not listening to all, only a few people, they are gaining, they have huge amount of money, and with that capital they are making money again and again, and the poor people, they are unemployed, they are not getting proper food. In India, the poverty, uh, the severity, it is 30 percent, 30 percent of uh, uh, Indian citizens are starving actually. The severity of poverty is like that, you know. But in Kerala it is only 0.7 percent, not starving. We have ration shops in, even in the hilly area. They are getting something to eat but they have no proper house or uh, they have to travel a little bit distance to the school. Uh, that kind of thing are there in a few families. I'm not explaining that thing, but Kerala is different because of the ideology, uh, left ideology, and also the social reformers like Sri Narayana Guru, uh, only one religion, one caste for the uh, human being. Human being should correct ourselves. We have only one God and not quarrel with the name of God. He propagated like untouchability. He was deadly against the untouchability and caste discrimination. And Kerala accepted something from that and changed a lot. But it is there. Now the fundamentalist principles are coming up. Some people are, some communalists are trying to get the people to accept that communalist conservative ideology. It is there. In that society, women, what is the concept? Women are second thing in a, con con a conservative society, you know. In capitalism also, the capitalism, the consumerist culture is considering women as a commodity, you know. As a commodity, not a dignified human being. And feudalism also, uh, they are thinking that women is below, they are not... Uh, good uh, by birth, uh, they are second thing, second sex. It is there. Because of that, the women are uh, not free to come out from their family to do each and every activities for the society. Now also there are some pressure uh, on women, but the reservation come in the local self-body election, they are coming and organizations, Kudumbasri Ayal Kutam and women organization, they are pulling out the woman from uh, from the house to the to the society for social work. It is happening, but little bit it is there. In that kind of a society, if a woman do a good thing, the society as a whole frowned. Can a woman do like that? <laughs> when a woman become woman become a panchayat president, someone asked, can she do that? That master before her was a very good panchayat president <laughs> and she came here. Can she do that? And we said, she can. And she did. And some women panchayat presidents got awards from the state for their good activities. You know, we are showing. But the society as a whole is not accepting this kind of activities of women. When I also, uh, I don't know how the Vogue magazine give a cover. I think Manchu, uh, I, at that time I didn't, uh, I didn't know Manchu at that time, you know. <laughs> I was not familiar with her uh, at that time. She was in Kotayam, Aymanam, but I didn't listen to Manchu because of my Haribari things. 
she was very famous because of the ceo of the cochin binale but uh, i didn't go to binale because of my <laughs> <laughs> my haribari things you know but it happened and people frowned how it happened it is a pr work they are saying you know and another thing one more thing the guardian once i got a call from guardian you know directly to my office they telephoned and they didn't understand who are calling who is calling my staff they give the phone to me and i attended the call and said it is from guardian and they want an interview with me because how we are uh, containing these things the uh, cruel viruses and uh, the crisis management how it is happening in kerala how are you possible to do that containing the the nipah virus that is uh, that mortality rate is too high there is no medicine no proper vaccine and yet you contained it in proper time in short span of time in a small village you didn't allow the virus to go out how is it happened they want to know that and laura spinney is interviewing me i didn't at that time was not familiar with laura spinney also that is my fault laura spinney is a a uh, very uh, well known journalist and she oh, is a writer she wrote about the 1918 flu a very good book there are several books from her but after that i find it out and laura spinney interviewed me she asked some questions i answered simply what we are doing here nothing more nothing less actually what we are doing here what we did here and laura spinney put it in a full page in guardian and she wrote a headline kerala's rock star minister i didn't expect that you know <laughs> and the corona virus layer after covid she called me and the nipa and covid incidents i uh, that experience i explained to her how we act in 2020 uh, this covid first came in kerala i explained everything in the book when the who put a slogan test 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 nothing else we discussed with the experts in kerala because kerala is the most vulnerable state you know vulnerable place our population density is 860 out of 1 square kilometer our country is it is 430 you know and our old age population it is almost 15% of the total population and we are in the first place uh, in child mortality rate it is too low and maternal mortality rate it is too low but we are the capital of diabetes <laughs> diabetes <laughs> diabetes capital we can say so because of the lifestyle lifestyle changed a lot we are not doing manual labor properly we are not taking any exercise there are so many malayalis here we are eating the food too much rice according to the taste of the <laughs> Uh, uh, not according to the nutrition va- uh, value and uh, that is why we are getting diabetic and also hypertension everything is there cancer everything is there so i am afraid of that uh, highly potential uh, high potential virus is coming its infectivity rate is too high more than nipa and mortality rate is also not too low and what we have to do we raised a slogan not test 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 because test kits are very uh, little bit at that time we are getting little test kits uh, central government is supplying we cannot buy from outside but we are not getting the uh, rt pcr test kits from outside we are getting a very uh, little number and if we test every one with these kits it will finish you know and actual thing we cannot uh, find out so we raised the slogan not test 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 but trace quarantine test isolate and treat at first we have to trace when who are coming out because this is an imported virus it is not originating from kerala it is coming from wuhan or other part of the country and we decided to trace the uh, all the people and find it out who and who are uh, have the contact from this kind of place hot places and we traced and quarantined that people and wait for 14 days at first it was 28 days and after that everyone said only 14 days incubation period we quarantined properly 
that time we are uh, uh, examining whether uh, they are uh, they are getting cold or getting uh, fever or cough etc and at that time we are taking that uh, that human being to hospital at once in our own ambulance and testing them properly and uh, taking them back to home if they are free from virus and if they got virus we are taking them to isolation in our hospital that method helped us and laura spinney wrote everything in that and when it come out some people said what is written in that guardian that is a pr work and eh? how shaila ji teacher come in guardian those <laughs> paper i don't know actually that is a pr work she have a pr team there i have no pr team at that time or this time only my staff in my office they are not uh, a uh, uh, efficient pr team but they are sincere <laughs> sincerely my pramod is sitting here my pa hard working man you know every time he is working day and night and my ps or additional ps and my secretaries in government department is officers they are also working they are not doing this pr work at that time <laughs> we have no time uh, at that time and one man said one opposition leader said it is mentioned like a do- rock dancer rock star she he thought that it, its meaning is rock dancer and all the media uh, a very good talk about that she mistaken to a rock dancer and media criticized him at that time oh i escaped <laughs> that was the thing that is why i am saying that if a if a woman is making anything women is part of the history but uh, in our history a few names are there about women man is writing history and man is putting man's name yeah. <laughs> uh, i think uh, i am not opposing uh, i am not such a radical feminist you know uh, man and women jointly should have to work to change the society and to make history it is like the my grandma she cannot come forward because she is woman and some limit are there for her and that is why i am saying if a woman is making something they are frowning can she do that someone is helping her someone is helping her uh, that is the also used to politicians heavily using the pr machinery unfortunately you are an exception teacher <laughs> yes uh, someone asked me a teacher whether you have uh, in a pr team <laughs> i said uh, no i have no communist leaders have no pr team you know <laughs> uh, i can say like that yes and one girl who are a public relation work privately she is doing she asked me i am working for another leader from opposition i am not naming <laughs> i no, i will not give the name uh, but she said i am working for him and a lady Uh, in that party if you want please call me i said i didn't know what what i can do with a public relation officer there are public relation officer for the government they are doing totally for the government but for a for an individually we have nothing in our heart we have not, we have no experience how can they boost a person to uh, that will not sustain you know that will burst definitely if we are working sincerely uh, something will exist there something will remain that is our policy i believe in that now also i never used a pr team or pr work i never asked any media please give it uh, for me this news that news etc but they were coming uh, to understand our work it is not my work it is a team work it was a team work now also i believe my party work also it should become a team work a person alone cannot do much team work that is most important thing and i am praising my team my secretary uh, i mentioned their name in uh, my book yes the yes officers are saying no madam please don't <laughs> put our name we are faceless i asked them why you are become faceless you are working every time we are scolding you if you are not working according to our wish every time uh, we are abusing and we are scolding but if you are doing good things it is our responsibility to praise you also you know 
ഏറ്റവും കൺഗ്രാജുലേറ്റ് യു ദേ ആർ ഓൾസോ വർക്കിംഗ് നോട്ട് ഓൺലി പോളിറ്റീഷ്യൻസ് യു നോ ആൻഡ് ഐ ഗിവ് ദാറ്റ് തിങ് ദാറ്റ് റെസ്പെക്ട് ടു മൈ ഓഫീസേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് മൈ സ്റ്റാഫ് ആൻഡ് എവറിബഡി ആൻഡ് ഐ നൗ ഐ എം തിങ്കിങ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ദ റൈറ്റ് അപ്രോച്ച് യു നോ ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ദ റൈറ്റ് അപ്രോച്ച് as a woman working in kerala who's relocated some years back and who's been in a leadership position what's been your own experience of uh, you know navigating this um i i think this the issue about women is sort of one of these peculiar contradictions that are there in kerala because as teacher said i mean and on every social development index we are far ahead of most states but you don't really find women in leadership positions in kerala and i should take this opportunity to say that the way that vogue story happened is is actually very simple because i was at the time living in kerala and as citizens we are used to being cynical about government complaining about government particularly as a malayali you that's what you're used to doing but living there during covid we were all extremely surprised and happy by the by the efficiency and the way the government seemed like it really cared and this is a, a that previous chapter of the ldf government had been put through almost you know godly number of challenges be- between floods and nipa and demonetization cyclone cyclone and every single time there was this feeling that they were stepping up and they cared and there were you know the body count wasn't in the hundreds and i live in a village in kotem and we understood our first sort of approach is the is the panchayat and we understood very well how much they were focused and attentive and communicative so when and i was at the time i was a contributing editor to vogue and they were collecting stories of covid warriors from around the country and looking at different places and i suggested teacher and a couple of other people and that was the first time i had made contact with teacher's team and the vogue cover happened because they were then taking a few key personnel and by then of course this is november 2020 by then it was clear that kerala was sort of this shining uh, beacon of hope in this kind of you know crisis and by then that was a decision that they had made that look we have this one individual that we can that we can actually put on the cover as leader of the year it was very unusual to have teacher had was very specific i'm not going to change my dress you need to you know <laughs> i only have half an hour in between i think we went for, took her to the balcony of the secretary at and shot a picture which is actually the 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 same picture that's on the cover so it happened completely like that but i was very surprised by the amount of conspiracy theories there were conspiracy theories that connected my heading the biennale in 2016 with this cover in 2020 i mean any number of any number of conspiracy theories but i think that it's it, i always say that the kerala gov- it's this unusual thing in our society that the government is more liberal than the population we're an extremely religious extremely conservative population which surprisingly has also uh democratically voted in a communist government which the opposition had always promoted as an ungodly entity so it's a it's a fundamental contradiction that i'm i mean you know as a woman who's worked there and worked in high positions it i hope that change comes it hasn't it's coming slowly but that's why i think teacher's story was so so interesting and was it was amazing to be able to talk about a woman having been able to do that and and receive international praise for it while i was reading the book uh, i you know found myself you know nodding along enthusiastically to several passages especially those where teacher you wrote how despite being eminently qualified having worked for many years it took you know an external push to take up a leadership position from you know from your mentors from your well wishers otherwise you would have been happy to you know do party work and not you know st- get a position of power so to speak and this is something that i think uh, all women would be familiar with we tend to kind of hold ourselves back even though we are we might be m- much more qualified than our male counterparts so and it would have been such a loss in fact if you hadn't kind of you know been able to step up 
So what would you advise you know, other women who similarly kind of see themselves as, you know, maybe not good enough, even, even though they are. Yes, situations changed a lot. <coughs> now the society is not uh, the society in my childhood time, you know. At that time, it is too difficult to come outside from a family. And all the families are putting their girls inside, not uh, sending outside because of this feudalist culture. If a girl went outside, uh, she will ruin, she will be ruined or uh, that is not uh, 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 par with the dignity of the society. Even in the downtrodden caste, the poor people who are starving, they are also believing women cannot go outside. That is not good for their society or their family like that. But uh, I got the opportunity, I explained because this ideology, this uh, socialist communist ideology came to my home. Uh, and at that time, same time, Congress is organizing in the independent struggle and uh, so many women from the upper caste and uh, the hi-fi families are also coming uh, either in Congress or to Communist Party leaders, etc. But uh, uh, it was a great struggle to come outside. But my family encouraged me. But when I took charge of, the, of something like uh, the Youth Federation, uh, and the women organization, to organize women in the countryside. Uh, I explained that I was not uh, very much uh, active to go uh, uh, myself outside. But my grandma and uncle were always remembering, always saying what happened in the uh, past in our society and we are going for a future, better future and we have to fight and we have to organize. The families were not sending the girl child to uh, proper education, you know. The children who study with me in lower primary school, uh, after five, uh, fifth standard, they were not going to high school, you know. The uh, parents were taking them to work in the field or uh, in the house, etc. And uh, just after 16 or uh, like that, uh, they were getting married. The girl children were getting married. And that thing, persuade me. And I also think that we should have to change this thing. And I uh, agreed to become unit secretary of uh, Women Federation according to their wish. And I become unit secretary. My grandma was very proud because her <laughs> granddaughter become a unit secretary, you know. She cannot uh, come to office bearer post. She was working freely as a social worker never joined in an organization or he was a communist believer, but uh, that's uh, something that feudal culture was also in her. That uh, he always, she always advised us that uh, we, you can speak together, uh, men and women, girl and boy, but not so close, you know. <laughs> <laughs> keep a distance, keep a distance, otherwise uh, you, you will be ruined, you know. A girl should have to suffer, you know, because that was the condition at that time. But she was so proud. And I just, uh, started to organize these uh, ladies at that time. I uh, went to all families and visited all the families there and asked them to come for the meeting to discuss the fate of women and discuss about education and discuss about the sufferings. But they are not ready to come, you know. No, Shailaja, we cannot come. My husband will beat me or my father will not allow. That is not good for women. They were arguing. But continuously, we went there and some problems, we uh, helped them to rectify their problems, beating husbands and uh, <laughs> uh, suffering from some illness. We uh, jointly, we tried to get rid of that thing. And they believed us. And slowly, they come out. Then I get some, uh, got some enthusiasm from that. And after that, uh, slowly, I was moving up local secretary, that village secretary and uh, district secretary and state secretary and to the central committee. That gradual process, it was a gradual process. And uh, that way I came out. I want to advise the, uh, or not advise, you know, want to say the uh, girls now, the youth now, there are so much opportunities in front of them. The society changed. Now the women have education, you know. Even in South, uh, it is better than the North 
all uh, girls are in Kerala. The uh, youth are taking, girls are uh, studying, I, I don't know. Uh, sometimes we are asking, what are you studying? Uh, I am taking a PG in Malayalam or uh, after that they are taking PG in English, post-graduation in English or some technical education, MBA uh, and uh, some B.Tech degrees or M.Tech degrees. Uh, girls are studying uh, in each and every family. That educated girls, what are they doing? That is the question. They are not coming out properly, you know. Even though situation changed, they are sitting quiet, you know. They are some people, some girls in some well-built fam well family. They were very rich and she had uh, a B.Tech degree. She have a B.Tech degree, but she is not willing to work every, anywhere. She, had, uh, she, she is getting pocket money from their family, very rich family, and going for shopping and buying this and that and keeping quiet. No politics, no work. <laughs> no social works, etc. We are advising that girls to find out a job themselves, you know. Some kind of uh, entrepreneurship, they have to do. Earning share, women should become an earning member. Then only she get uh, dignity in the society, you know. And poor girls, they are searching for job, but they are not uh, well enough or bold enough to find out a job or create a job herself, you know. Now we are propagating or we are promoting the uh, poor girls to have some entrepreneurship in their village itself, giving some bank loans and helping to develop the skills and using the knowledge they attained by these degrees, you know. Taking a degree, nothing, good for nothing. <laughs> but, but making that degree practical, then only the society gets something from them. And superstitions also. Even a postgraduate woman, they are believing in believing in God. That is not a bad thing, you know. Manju said that uh, godless entity, you know. Communists are... I mean, that the all the opposition, that the opposition described op opposition it. Opposition described not, not, not Manju is not saying. <laughs> opposition. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Manju is very progress. I, am, I was afraid at that time because I am a communist. Manju have no such kind of uh, political activity. She's not a politician. And while I am explaining these struggles, martyrdom and other thing, I am looking at Manju's eyes. What is her <laughs> feeling? <huh? laughs> Whether she can write it in that spirit. But Manju take it in her heart, you know. And she reproduced in very good language what I was uh, thinking in my heart, you know. She explained it well. And she is saying, 1957, by ballot paper, through ballot paper, a left government was selected in Kerala. Why? Because of this struggle. Because of this uh, sacrifice. People thought that if they come to power, we will get something. They got, they got the right of the land, eviction stay ordinance. And the Land Reforms Act in Kerala. In Kerala, everyone, if you buy a piece of land, we can register it, uh, describing the entity. We can register this land as ourselves, you know. We are free to, uh, to, to sell it. Uh, we can sell the land. We have the freedom. Not only for some, but for all the, uh, each and every person of the population. So Manju wrote it well, uh, uh, because she accepted the idea and, uh, and she wrote, she is not a communist. She now also, she is not working with any party. <laughs> but similarly, the ideology, communist ideology didn't, uh, 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 is not deadly against the believers. People believe in God. Why? Because they have some miseries, you know. If we get rid of all the miseries, uh, and they will not even think about God, you know. <laughs> Yes, they are thinking about God because we have to put this thing to somebody. God is listening carefully or uh, uh, patiently. If uh, we are saying this misery to a friend, uh, he will become irritated. I have miseries also. You are every time explaining this. But God will never say like that. Uh, yeah, all the God will accept. So that is a... Uh, that is a uh, uh, th thing to get some relief 
uh, for the people and they are believing God. But quarreling about the God. My God is very powerful. Your God is not like that. How can we say so? If your God is powerful, the other God is also powerful, you know. That is come that, uh, that that was the communist uh, thinking, you know. But superstition, we cannot uh, draw a line to demarcate what is belief and what is fulfill is superstition, you know. But the belief that makes some diff uh, difficulty to others, that becomes superstition, you know. And uh, without any scientific proof, you are saying something nonsense. Because that COVID period, someone said that uh, if we apply cow dung to your body, COVID will go. This is a virus going to the lungs and multiplying the, becoming, uh, making some difficulties in the organs and dying people after we will die, definitely. And at that time, they are saying applying cow dung to the body, the virus will go. This is scientific society. And that uh, unscientific thing that we should have to oppose. But this uh, educated girl also, Chowa Dosham, do you heard about that? Uh, Malayali, Malayali yeah. Malayali yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, the girl is not getting married. Why? Because the Jataka, le, the horoscope, it is, uh, it, uh, Chowa is there in that. And I asked uh, my uh, this women you know, gatherings at Chowa is there? Yes, it is the teacher. Something is behind that. Then I said, when I was delivering my child, uh, elder boy, in the hospital, AKG hospital, Kannur, a Muslim girl was also there. Same time we delivered. And the doctor said that, Shailaja, same time. Even a minute uh, difference is not there. Uh, you and Subaida delivered uh, a boy child. Both of them are boy. And if my boy have this chowa, the Muslim Muslim boy have have him chowa, they are not believing in chowa. And this uh, uh, this graha chowa, uh, yes, that is uh, looking the Hindu women in the. Earth, only Hindu women. What nonsense you are saying, you know. Christianity and Muslim have no chowa. Yes. But Hindu have chowa. And uh, uh, crying and sitting depressed eh? to change the chowa. They cannot change the chowa, you know. Yes. Yet at least that thing. Jawaharlal Nehru told us, you know. I think mentioned in my book. I don't know. Everything we cannot write in the book. Nehru, when we got independence, called the scientists, all the scientists, in front of him and said, all societies are normally conservative. But our society is more than normally conservative. <laughs> you have to change the society. You have to inculcate scientific feeling to the society, you know. But uh, we didn't listen to Nehru, you know. We are inculcating the superstition in the society. Even the scientists, they are doing this kind of thing. Rituals of some religion. How can a secular country practice some religions or one religion's ritual in that in this kind of functions? Even the inauguration. You forgive me if uh, you, you are belongs to uh, that kind of thinking or not. I am not uh, uh, saying anything personally, but inauguration of the parliament house for the secular country. How can we you utilize these sannyasis and uh, that kind of Hindu rituals? Uh, Christians are here, you know. Yeah, yeah. We cannot uh, agree with that, you know. We are... Yeah, they, they have some, some spot, some point <laughs> for argument, you know. They arranged some Christians to recite something. But it is not like that. All the functions are like uh, uh, Hindu rituals, you know. And in some place, a uh, chorus for Christian and some more people for Muslim, they recite something from Bible, something from Quran. I am expressing my own opinion. You agree or you can agree or disagree, you know. Uh, I am not insisting you to agree that. 
It is my thinking. Our country is a secular country. It is Jawaharlal Nehru's thinking. When someone asked to inaugurate a temple, our president is Radhakrishnan. Radhakrishnan asked Nehru, sorry, Rajendra Prasad. Rajendra Prasad asked Nehru at that time whether I can go to inaugurate a temple. Nehru said, no, we cannot because ours is a secular country and the rulers cannot express uh, some favor to any one religion, you know. That is religious thing. They can do that. It is better not go. Nehru didn't say, you cannot go, don't go. But it is better not go. Rajendra Prasad didn't go, you know. That is the dignity, you know. Prayer and worship to God, that is our private thing, you know. But in a secular country, if you want to become secular, you should be secular in mind. That rituals are not a secular mind's uh, practice, you know. I didn't believe like, like that. For sake, arranged uh, some lines from Quran or uh, Bible, that is not enough, you know. That is not the right way. Please practice in a democratic way, you know. What happens if you are not? That is why I am saying, I am, I am saying to the girls and boys, especially the girls, please utilize the knowledge attained by you. You are now educated. You can work for the society. Whatever may be your selection, please work for the society and uh, don't go inside the home and please come outside and for social work. That is the, and oppose. And you should, uh, you should say against this kind of superstitions and uh, this communalism, etc. And you should become a citizen of India. India is secular, a secular citizen. That is my opinion. <laughs> I don't know they accept or not. They can accept and they can get it aside. That is their choice, you know. Tisha, you've, uh, you know, in your years as health minister, even now, you've obviously you've become a very powerful role model, I feel, hopefully to, you know, girls in Kerala as well. And uh, I think if people in this auditorium had a vote, your vote margin might be even greater than the historic election of 2021. So what are your thoughts on perhaps becoming the first woman chief minister of Kerala? No, no, we cannot say so. First becoming MLA and ex expecting to become a minister and chief minister, that's not like that. And if we are working for the society, in some place we have to do some responsibilities in the parliamentary area. And I am a political worker. I am central committee member of my party. And we are looking these two positions equal, you know. We are studying or Party is teaching all the cadres. Ours is a cadre party that parliamentary and extra parliamentary works are similar. If we get opportunity to function in a, as a government, we are not uh, getting it outside or uh, we are taking uh, that opportunity and do as much as we can. We know our limitations uh, to do that because uh, we are the state in India. And according to the policy of the central government only, we can do these things. We cannot uh, make everything socialist manner. But we can do some relief, so do some social uh, setup or uh, some kind of uh, a social service to the poor people, and we can arrange that. So we are joining the government, and we are conducting these things. And I become four times MLA and one time minister. There are so many people in my party, you know. Like me, there are so many women who are working hard to organize, to, uh, to organize a struggle against this everything. The uh, economic policy, uh, the uh, new uh, policy of the government, capitalist ideology, everything. They are, every time they are uh, struggling to get the society to get a better place. But they are not becoming minister or MLA. I became four times MLA, one time minister. And after that party said, you should have to work in the party front and other people should go to the ministership, you know. I didn't feel difficulty. I have some expectations because at that tenure I started some work 
some basic changes in health sector explained in the uh, it is not only my work a team work but team was formed and help uh, it is there are some uh, something from the chief minister also we uh, was explaining party's policy and giving us direction but we are working health department is working uh, in a good way and we have some some basic changes we started i want to complete that actually you know every person is every human being i also want to uh, make it uh, smooth and uh, get it to the aim to to go to the fulfillment of that you know but i thought uh, ldf government uh, come, came back and the policy is not changing that things are going on and it will go on and another a uh, man or woman can take it uh, and she can or he can also perform like me i thought so and i decided to work in party front and also as an mla in my constituency uh, the question is that if you are uh, uh, the thing is that if you want to work if you are willing you have confidence there are so many things in my con uh, constituency i am making something different you know uh, all uh, most of the mls are doing like that not only me, me but i am saying about me you know and uh, some a new policy a new uh, thing that tarangam waves the waves in the education sector i am organizing the education sector and giving uh, some new thing to the uh, schools and uh, in the education sector the the waves the project is called the waves and i supplied uh, this uh, sports equipment to each and all schools not only from government fund government fund is very less we have not uh, enough fund for that and i got some some uh, social responsibility fund from the indian oil corporation and i supplied uh, this sports kit to uh, it is one thing there are so many things like that if you are willing you will find out something you know and you uh, you can satisfy in that work also not only looking up looking up and the question about the chief minister there is only one chief minister for one state <laughs> or late we, uh, we cannot say it is now pinarayi vijayan our brave chief minister she he is also a man of vision you know during that covid uh, time he declared his government declared 20000 crores worth package to uh, to the uh, management of covid you know free treatment 2020 free treatment to all covid patients we are admitting covid patients in private hospitals also from maharashtra maharashtra health minister called me madam how are you managing these private hospitals they are not obeying and they are uh, raising their fees there they are not ready to give isolation wards for the government how you are managing the i said we called first chief minister called all the all the private management hospitals i also participated in that meeting and we said this is a dangerous thing you know we will die human beings will succumb to death thousands of people will die we should have to work together each and every private medical colleges should provide 200 isolation beds to government you know we will treat all the patient we will admit the patient to your hospital and we will pay not the fees you asked we will decide what is the fees for the covid treatment and we paid it all of them uh, stand with us you know that was kerala and that chief minister is continuing and how can i say he is bad i am best <laughs> <laughs> he is best he is continuing second time as chief minister you know there is no question how you, why you are not becoming chief minister one day another lady will come and at that time we hope so situation wants <laughs> we hope so <laughs> yes definitely okay but teachers uh, very generous in her thinking i feel because you know the party's de decision i felt cost a lot of uh, heartbreak at the time i know manju also thought the same i saw her tweets from 2021 <laughs> but Um, you know i i i uh, want to say teacher is very motivated by problems and there are enormous amount, any number of problems to solve 
And I've seen her, I mean, we all start, and, and I think the starting point of the book itself was this idea that, that they come from a family of political workers, but not politicians. politicians yes. And I asked her the same question that you asked her just now. And at the beginning, I was like, well, well, how is that possible? Because we really think in terms of ambition and career progression and all of these things. But her way of thinking, as has been inculcated in them as a family, is a very different one. It is this motivation of social work. And once I was also able to kind of get my head around that, I understood, as I said, she's motivated by problems <laughs> and there's any number of problems to solve. So she continues to be busier than she ever, <laughs> ever was. So there's been no dent in teachers' uh, work. She's just sort of diverted to another set of issues, which I think is an amazing way of thinking about, thinking about it because we don't think of the massive numbers of political workers that that are required to run the political system. And I think she really sees herself as one of those. Just to give you a sense of you know, her popularity cutting across uh, party lines, one of the anecdotes in the book is about, you know, during the election, one of the people in her constituency tells her that I vote for Lotus normally, but this time I'm voting for you, teacher. That's from my, that's from my place, you yes. know. The man belongs to BJP, you know. We have no personal grudges, you know, any people, even with Narendra Modi or, uh, I mean, we have no personal grudges, only according to the policy we are uh, uh, criticizing, uh, not personally, you know. And a man, when my uh, car was moving, uh, and so many vehicles are with uh, with the candidate, you know, the road, it, it will become a procession, you know, with mic and announcement, everything. A man was coming in his hand, uh, not lotus, a rose flower was in his hand and he asked it to stop. And uh, my comrade said, uh, he's a BJP man. <laughs> <laughs> I asked, please stop. What happens? We can look. And he came near by me. And uh, I opened the door and uh, he gave the flower to me and said, I belong to BJP. I'm not changing. I'm BJP, you know. But this time I will vote for you, teacher, because of the work you had done uh, throughout these years. We are not thinking. If we are managing a crisis, at that time we are not thinking people will appreciate you. All people will not appreciate you, no. People are, most of the people likes to criticize. Even though anything uh, sensible in that criticism, they want to criticism for the sake of criticism, you know. Without saying some words against this, they cannot sleep, you know, some <laughs> people. <laughs> but uh, if you do something, something from your mind and willingly, willingness, not only with, uh, with your willpower and willingness, and uh, if you like to do that, after that, uh, people will approve that thing, you know. They will appreciate you. Uh, Nipah virus period, I never thought uh, uh, I got appreciation, appreciation from outside, but uh, we did because we feared about that. At that time, fear was there, but I cannot express the fear because he, the minister feared all the society also become fearful. That become a dangerous thing. So I got some strength. I think I got it from my grandma. <laughs> my grandma was not a great person, but she never uh, thought, uh, she never want to become fearful. Sometimes uh, uh, so many things uh, will happen in a village at that time. Very fearful about the, uh, what is meant by this, um, uh, some superstitions are there that dead people's, uh, uh, the spirit will come to the body of the living. Uh, at that time, it was uh, every every houses it will happen. If anyone hanged uh, to death uh, in our places, definitely that spirit will come to uh, someone uh, in our society and shivering and uh, uttering uh, baselessly something and uh, opening eyes uh, like that. And all the people will shiver with uh, this fear. But my grandma boldly go to the and there was some conversation with the spirit and grandma, you know. <laughs> grandma was not, not totally scientific. 
grandma also thought some kind of spirit may be there <laughs> but but she will not uh, she she never uh, admit that uh, she have fear you know she called scold she sometimes she scold the that spirit uh, and uh, i will beat you <laughs> or uh, i will make you to drink urine never it happened but uh, after their conversation after uh, talking the spirit will go because uh, the mindset will become loose and it is like some hypnotism you know uh, slowly and slowly uh, the person is um, uh, get re- get rid of from this dual personality and uh, become uh, proper you know and from that thing i also got something that in front of a uh, a crisis standing Uh, uh ridiculous or uh, uh, fearful that will ruin everything you should have to add uh, either whether we uh, we cannot think whether we can win or uh, lose that was not should not be the thought at that time we should believe ourselves that we can win you know if you do it properly the result is will be fine you know Uh, all this crisis at that time i got this feeling in front of a crisis i am not a great person or uh, uh, experienced person or like that i am only a political worker but uh, i have a team i have team is behind me you know uh, doctors nurses and uh, all the health team my secretary and i am not alone you know think we are not alone we should have managed this thing properly with the team i got that enthusiasm luckily Uh, so uh, it is easy to tackle the problem all the problems at that time i think kerala was lucky you got that <laughs> thank you so much shailaja teacher thank you manju and thank you all of you for uh, being part of this what i hope was very engaging discussion thank you all you have been listening to bic talks by bangalore international center if you like what you heard do follow us on social media Keep up with our programming by signing up for our mailer on the website or leave us a review or rating on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. The crew that makes these podcasts possible is Gaurav Krishna and Ishan Gupta on sound supervision and production with support from S Saruna Raj and Raghu Tenkara. Our work is designed by Channi Venkataraman of Criss Cross Design Studio. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on your favorite podcast platform. It can also be accessed on our website Bangalore International Center.org. This is Lekha Naidu signing off on behalf of everyone at BIC.